So, we have the keystone connected to the cable. Uh, okay, let's uh, work on the other side. So, normally you'd have a wall. And in that wall, you would have an electricity box. Kind of like this one. You would poke one of the holes out. Like that. And this would be mounted in your wall. And your cable would come in through it. Okay. And as you can see, I have the dual version, so you would have two cables coming through it. But it's uh, the process is the same with either one or two. So, okay, first we need this little plate, and here you can see this can twist, and you can mount it either this this way or this side up. That way, I, if the cable's coming from down uh, or up, it's never a problem. Okay. Let me make sure we're in focus. Okay. So, in this case, let's say it's uh, coming from up. And you'd have to thread the cable through like this. But we're first going to strip a pretty good bit of the mantle. Okay. As you can see, that's a pretty long, uh, long piece. And here, again, we take off the braid. It's okay to lose a few strands in the process, but try to ma minimize the amount you lose. Okay, then we separate the pairs to find the drain wire. There it is. And then we twist the drain wire with the braid. Trying to keep it all on camera. Sometimes I forget. Okay. And then we basically we twist that around our cable. We mostly try and make sure it kind of sticks to each other. There we go. Let's remove these strands. Okay. Next part we take our stripped cable and we thread it through one of the holes on the back and then we push it through right until the part where you have the braid and the drain wire uh, through the mechanism and then we screw it down Trying to make sure you can see it. And you also determine the position where the cable needs to come into the... I don't know how you call that bucket or... This, this piece at least. Okay. That's secure. That's good. So then we take our second part and... Always remember that you want the ports to orient downwards because you want to plug it in like this and in the end it will look like this you could do it this way but that would just look quite weird on your wall so i don't advise that so in here again we have the a and the b side and as you can see this is made for two cables so it basically splits them between left or top and bottom. So let's uh, undo the foil. Okay, I'm going to need a few snips again. That's uh, prepared, and make sure, especially when having two cables, that this, this part is flat enough, because this part needs to go on top of it. So, 
So when we look at this part, we can see, I hope we can see on the camera, that we have the colors. So let's split those. So we're going to use the top one and we need the B version. So we need orange and green on this side. And then we need blue and brown on this side. And here it becomes a bit finicky, but basically you have to thread them through the middle, as you can see here, and then this can go down right until it clicks. Okay, and you should still have your cables. So after that, we need to route our cables to the designated terminal, and then we need something called where oh there it is this is a an lsa um tool i guess you would call it um this is totally a fake one but a fake one in my opinion has worked just as well as uh well i've never used a real one but the fake ones have been working really well for me so again i'll have all links to and, and part numbers to all these this stuff in the description so you'll need one of these to crimp it down on a terminal. So first we take our, because we're doing B, we take our green and we just put it in place. And then we take our green white. There we go. And then we take our crimping tool and make sure the scissor part is on the outside. So this is the scissor part, and this is the crimping part. Okay, we put it on there, and we just push it in. It's kind of hard doing it one-sided. If you don't think it's stuck, just do it again. Normally these would spring off, but hold on. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Okay, and now those are crimped. So let's do the uh, same for the rest of the wires. Excuse me if I'm in front of the camera. Okay, so it should look something like this. Let's do the other side. I have to start with blue and blue white. And then we take brown, white, and brown. There we go, let's get those. Okay. That was one better. So now, as you can see, we have all the wires connected. And if you kept all the cable spacing, etc., as I did, you learn after doing a few. You should be able to snap on the front plate. But this is always a kind of a hassle. Okay, there it was. And okay. Okay, next. And this box is a bit uh, harder because our cable is facing upward, but our, the cable in the box is coming in from the back. So I'm going to have to bend it a little bit. First, I need to take out these screws. Okay, and then we basically just push it in there. The cable is tough, so it could take a little bit of force. Okay. And normally this box would be in the wall, so you align it with the wall, and then you put the screws back in.
Okay, so now it's in the box. It's a bit crooked, but as I said, normally this would be in the wall and you align it with the wall. And well, that's basically it. After that, you can take your little plate. Let me take the screw out. And there you go. Finished Ethernet jacks and a keystone. And that is how you connect CAT7 cable. So how do you now know it works? Well, you take a little tester module like I have here and you plug in a cable on this side. This one only has one, right? Yeah. And let's put this one. Uh, no, no, no. I can't do that. I'm not sure if it's the left or right one. <laughs> so you get another patch cable. And you put it on the other side. There we go. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Nope. So let's turn that around. Or get the other one. And there we go. And if everything went correctly, all the pairs work or all the pins work and you also have the ground connected. So this should now easily be sufficient for gigabit and with good patch cables and, and making everything not too long, it should also be suitable for 10 gigabit and who knows in the future. As I said, I'll have links in the description below for all the parts I used and uh, the tools and uh, stuff like that you need and if you have any questions or you run into problems let me know in the comments and uh, i'll try and help you so catch you in the next video bye bye